Hi guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Monday, March 26, 2018, and this is part 6 of my series of videos debunking the mainstream history on the stone walls of New England and New York. And uh, this part 6 I'm calling Emotional Appeals, and the reason why I'm calling it Emotional Appeals is because we're going to take a look at John Delano's Green Mountain Academy lecture. Um, and, you know, the reason why that is is because Mr. Delano is a very passionate person. He's a very emotional person about the stone walls. He lives among them, and, you know, he's, he's uh, got the tones for the stones and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, look, I can understand that. And, you know, at, at the very least, we can't be too hard on people like Delano here and Thorson and Susan Allport and the, you know, mutual admiration society of uh, people who uh, talk about the stone walls. We can't be too hard on them because if somebody was tearing a stone wall down in upstate New York or New England, you could bet that Mr. Delano and Mr. Thorson and Susan Allport and everybody else would be there in two seconds to try to prevent that from happening and for good reason. And I would be right behind them. With them. Okay, so we can't be too hard on them. My problem with Delano here is that, you know, his explanation of the history of the stone walls, his assessment of the data that he presents in his lecture is, you know, in my opinion, totally wrong. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why that I am infinitely more qualified to assess um, the data that he presents in there than he is. Believe it or not, okay, well, I'll get to that later, but okay, so we're going to take a look at this lecture here, Green Mountain Academy lecture, and um, again, you know, John Delano gives this lecture, and in it, and, you know, I'm going to repeat what he said in a, pre you know, previous uh, video of mine, you know, he states clearly at the beginning of his lecture that there is no written documentation of building stone walls anywhere in the historical documentation that they can find. Absolutely nowhere. Okay, so he puts that disclaimer at the beginning of his lecture. So, you know, knowing that, we all know that, then, you know, we have to assume that whatever he's presenting here is you know, his opinion, you know, his hypothesis, you know, you know, his, uh, you know, whatever he's got from inference and everything else. So, I mean, it's just strictly his opinion. And, you know, he also uses um, uh, Robert Thorson um, as a, um, as a reference. So, I'm assuming that, he, you know, they, they, they're buddy-buddy with each other. So, um, you know, I, maybe he's using some of uh, Thorson's material to present in his lectures. I don't know. But he does give him the credit at the beginning of his TEDx talk. And, uh, you know, his TEDx talk, by the way, is just like half of the green, the, the, the second half of his Green Mountain lecture. Okay. So, you know, Delano, you know, in his lecture, you know, he's from that area of Albany, he lives there now in the Rensselaer, you know, part of Albany, of Van Rensselaer, which is an old Dutch family, okay, uh, one of the first ones and the main ones in New York, and, um, let's see if I can find it, um, and, you know, they, the Rensselaer, the Van Rensselaers were there, um, basically um, at the turn of the 18th century, you know, 19, 18th, 19th century, somewhere in that vicinity. They're not sure. They're absolutely not sure, you know, whether it's before 1700 or, or after 1700, but it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, is that, that the Van Rensselaer Manor was there for already, you know, pretty much uh, 100 years before... Um, uh, you know, uh, the real um, settlers that uh, Thorson and Delano were talking about, you know, went into these areas. So we have to talk about that a bit. And if you recall, in um, my second 
part of this series, I was saying that, you know, you have to know a lot about the history of this region to make a proper assessment of the history of the stone walls, okay? So, um, in any case, you know, he lives in that area, um, Delano lives in that area there, so that's where his interest comes from, I guess. Um, and, you know, he's a geologist and he wants to talk about it. So, and, and, you know, I think a lot of what Thorson says, you know, in his giving his history of the stone walls, and even Delano here, some of the stuff that they say about the settlers and colonists are, is obviously true. You know, again, the people who are in the alternative history community are not saying that, you know, settlers and colonists didn't work hard, build stone walls, or anything like that. We're just saying that in tandem with that, there is this other history and a, a, a reasonable explanation for the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of stone walls that are in upstate New York and New England. Okay, so okay, so in Thorsten's lecture there, he talks about the area there where he lives, the Van Rensselaers, and he talks about that time period, and he talks about what in that time period, what the Dutch were doing, and I didn't get into it earlier because I was saving it really for this part, um, what the Dutch had prior to the 1665 um, turnover to the British, were the, and they had it afterwards too, they were allowed to continue uh, operating by grants by the British government up until 1775. They operated what they called patroons, and patroons basically was like a lord and, you know, manor and serf arrangement, except that these were indentured servants, you know. Normally the indentured servants would be bound for five years, and after that they were, you know, free of their obligation, and free to rent the property, lease the property there, or maybe even buy it or whatever it is. And um, these patroons were operating operating as sort of manor, you know, lord and manor kind of operations there up until the revolution when they more or less, you know, abolished this, you know, lord and manor system that the English permitted to the Dutch, okay? So Van Rensselaer, and you know, my point with that is that Van Rensselaer had been there for a hundred years before Delano starts showing some of the data because that's the only real data that we have. You know, we have some early of data here and there but not a lot and you know I was trying to give my point about um, uh, upstate New York um, in the previous at the end of the previous video there's these regions of upstate New York these forest vast forested regions with these stone walls in them that they do not have any documentation on. There were no manners there. There were, you know, they, they don't know because they have no documentation on it. So what it is is that they assume that the situation that, you know, that was up there where they have no documentation is similar to that, uh, you know, of, of this area of New York where they do have these manor houses that were these patroons, etc., etc. So. Um, again, as I said in my earlier videos, you have to understand a lot about the history to understand what's going on here. And you know, Delano, you know, Delano goes through that in his video um, on the stone walls, which is funny. He says if stone walls can talk, but apparently they're talking, but he's not listening. Okay, because his assessment of the situation is just wrong. Okay, so in any case, these patroons operated there up until 1775 when our government, you know, the new colonial, you know, uh, new United States government, um, you know, more or less abolished that kind of system. And that is the time that, you know, a lot of these um, manor um, lords, you know, like Van Rensselaer, um, started selling the property off because, you know, they couldn't operate under you know the manor house conditions anymore so they started selling the property at the at later dates okay um to anybody who would be willing to buy it because they were selling it dirt cheap because the land was so poor to to work and to cultivate um you know crops so, um, you know, in any case, you know, he talks about these, this, you know, the patroons and the, the, the lord and manor systems in New York there. And, but, you know, he's buying into Thorson's contention that, you know, 
that the stone wall building didn't occur until 17, you know, between 1775 and 1825, and there was very little of it going on before then. So they're contending that, and that would be the time after 1775 when they abolished this Lord and Manor system that these Dutch um, uh, owners, landowners like Van Rensselaer, started selling off this property for dirt cheap. And especially as conditions got worse and worse and worse as we, you know, uh, went over in my previous video about these, the year without a summer and the poor growing conditions at the beginning of the 19th century, which created a mass exodus out of the Northeast, okay? You know, seriously challenging um, Thorson's thesis. So anyway, okay, so, you know, he goes over, you know, Delano goes over all of this stuff with the patroons and all kind of stuff, and he shows some topographical maps, etc. And one of the things that he shows in um, this video, the Green Mountain Lecture video, um, is this land survey done about 1790, okay? So you can see, this looks like puzzle pieces here, you know, all kinds of weird geometric shapes over here, and that was part of the Van Rensselaer area, part of the manor system there, okay? And so, let's take a look at a, um, Let's see if I can find it here. I thought I had it. Okay, yeah, here it is right here. Here is the manor of, of Rensselaer from 1777. This is a map of the area from here. And for some reason, they were able to get these nice straight lines over here for the area over here in this um, land survey. But for some reason, it's got to be these weird, you know, trapezoidal uh, rhombus you know, shapes, whatever it is. So, um, you know, look, you know, he, he says, you know, that, you know, he knows, you know, he feels and he knows that, you know, these people and that, you know, how hard they worked and all this kind of stuff on his stone wall said, look, again, nobody's challenging. You know, look, if you were a subsistence farmer there in 1790, you were having a hard time, my friend. This was very hard work, very hard life for these people, and they deserve all the credit that they should get for all their hard work and their struggles through these times. You know, nobody is taking that away from them, Mr. Delano or Mr. Thorson. We're, we're not taking that away from them. That story is still good. It's, it, there's nothing to say about that, okay? What we're saying here is that these walls in this area right here don't make any sense. And it's funny. This is how Delano presents this piece of this lecture right here. Right before it, he goes, you know, in New Hampshire and Vermont, we have these nice straight walls, nice geometric patterns. They're all nice and straight. And, you know, when we get here in New York, you know, New York, oh, you know, we just can't get anything right here in New York. <laughs> hey, Delano. Get lost, okay, buddy? You know, I lived in New York all my life, pal. Okay? We can't get anything right over here? What a stupid thing to say. Okay? And what? That's his explanation. There is no other explanation, okay? Because I'm telling you from my experience, this whole plan here doesn't make any sense whatsoever from a community planning standpoint, certainly, okay? Now, I don't think you even have to be somebody, you know, who, who are, you know, has any sort of, uh, you know, knowledge in the disciplines of these things. And let me tell you, okay, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, okay. Delano here, he's a geologist, okay. He's a geologist from... Um, uh, Stony Brook, I believe, University, or he graduated from Stony Brook University, I believe. Let's see, yeah, let's see. 
<clears throat> John Delano received his PhD in geological science at Stony Brook University, where I am at here in Long Island, very close to me, and currently holds the ranks of distinguished teaching professor emeritus at the University of Albany, blah, 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 okay? He's a very important guy. He's a geologist, and, you know, he's attempting to make some sort of sense out of this history here. And his assessment of this property here with these weird geometric puzzle shapes here as being the property boundaries of the indentured servants living on ben Rensselaer makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Okay? And I'm going to tell you why. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, okay? When I was in elementary school, okay, I had such good reading skills that the teachers made me more or less an adjunct teacher to teach slow kids who had difficulty reading how to read, okay? In junior high school, I had an accelerated curriculum. I didn't even attend regular class with, uh, with the rest of the kids. I read in a library and I did all my work in the library. I was an advanced curriculum in junior high school. And in high school, I just didn't even go to class. I just told the teachers, look, tell me what the course is, when you're gonna give the test. And I was one of the top students in that school, okay? When I got to college, you know, my, my IQ is, you know, more or less like 138, if I remember correctly, something in the 130s or whatever it is. And when I was in college, I was honors list and dean's list, okay? I trained in drafting, engineering, architecture, landscape ar architecture, topographical design, industrial landscape architecture, community planning, um, egress and, and, and uh, eng you know, uh, entrance, you know, all that stuff. I've been trained in all that stuff, okay? This is absolutely ridiculous. And there's no reason why Van Rensselaer, who was a very smart guy, a very, very shrewd guy, and he's one of the richest guys in American history, okay? You don't have to be a genius to do this. There's so many problems with this, you don't have to be trained, okay? Formally, to understand what the problems are with this whole situation, okay? So I think, first of all, right off the bat, you can see by the way this is laid out here, okay, so you're building walls here. Whose walls are you building? This guy's walls, your wall, this guy, this guy, this guy, this uh, Whose walls are you building here? Okay, this, this is gonna create tremendous problems here. I can see with the construction of these walls, unless there was like full cooperation from every, you know, whose walls are you building here? Yours or somebody else's, okay? And then you can see there's this road that goes through 